Kosky for dietsinterview.com and today we're discussing the new dietary guidelines for Americans. This document publishes every five years by law by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. The 2010 edition talks about a lot of changes that Americans need to make in our diets. None of these should come by surprise. What, I what is the dietary guidelines? They help Americans make more informed choices about eating and living active lives. And they're based on the la latest scientific research and nutritional evidence. A panel of experts and registered dietitians convenes and they meet and vote and agree upon what the new guidelines will be. The main ideas in the 2010 edition of the Dietary Guidelines include consuming less calories, consuming more nutritionally dense food, making more informed choices about the foods that we eat, and living more physically active lives. All of this will help us manage our weight, reduce our risk of disease, and promote total health. Some of the facts that are shared in the 2010 Dietary Guidelines talk about children's obesity and the rising rate that children are being affected by this disease. Since the 1970s, children with obesity between the ages of 2 and 11 have doubled, and for those 12 to 19, it has tripled. They say that one-third of the calories that children are consuming come from sugar and solid fat, and that adults and children combined are deficient in major nutrients like calcium, vitamin D, fiber, and potassium. But a lot of these new guidelines are going to help us incorporate those vitamins back into our diets naturally as long as Americans step up and follow the guidelines and eat according to the guidelines. So what are these new guidelines? They want us to reduce our sodium to 1,500 milligrams a day. Right now the average American consumes about 3,400 milligrams, so we're going to have to cut that in half. You can start by reducing and limiting the amount of fast food that you eat, or even how you liberally add salt to some of the foods that you eat. They want to see a 20 to 30 percent reduction in saturated fat and added sugar. There is a difference between natural sugar and added sugar in food, so this means you're going to have to take the time to read those food labels and see what manufacturers are putting in the foods that you want to buy. They want to see us reduce our portion sizes. They want to see us limit refined grains. That means eating less white bread and white pasta. They want us to focus on a more plant-based diet. That means more fruits, vegetables, beans, seeds, and nuts. They want to see us eating more seafood so that we get more omega-3s into our diet. And they want to see us eating more lean protein and dairy. The fitness recommendations did not change in 2010 over the 2005 dietary guidelines. They remain the same at a minimum of 30 minutes a day, five days a week, for 150 minutes of exercise during the week. This can be anything, walking, jogging, swimming, or simply playing in the yard with your kids or the family dog. There are far too many ways to exercise and be fit without dreading the treadmill. Find something that you love, find two or three things that you love, and do those. And then, that 30 minutes of exercise a day, it seamlessly fits into your lifestyle. It's not something you dread, and it might actually be something that you look forward to. They also make a recommendation to limit the amount of screen time that kids have. This means less video games, less times in front of the computer, and less time parked in front of the television. Just like the adults, the kids need to get up, move, and play to live fit, active lifestyles. You can see more about the guidelines over on dietsandreview.com, and if you follow this link, you can see the complete uh, 2010 dietary guidelines that were published today. For dietsandreview.com, this is Brandy Kosky.